Man, isn't it good to be here today? Was that awesome just to sing and be reminded of who we are? We're going to talk a little bit about that today because we, we wanted to ask the question as we enter into really the next couple of months, um, this question, what's next? I mean, you can see it there, but it's going to be kind of after Easter, post-Easter, what's next? What's next? After Sunday, what's next? Well, Monday, uh, that's what's next, right? Monday comes. I mean, we, Monday takes a bad rap, probably for good reason. We've got memes from Monday, right? Check this out. Um, here, this is my, my, my every Monday face, right, right here. Or how about this one, the return of, of Monday. It's in technicolor. It's scary. It's creepy. It's, what, it's horror. It's all that. Or this one. I love this one, uh, my Monday face, He's that little guy. You're like, yeah, that's my, that's my wife, or, you know, or that's my kid. How about this one? Um, yeah, dear Monday, nobody likes you. Sincerely, everybody. It, Will Ferrell hates Mondays, evidently. How about this next one? Happy Monday? Why would you say that? Okay, and Michael. And <laughs> Monday morning coming at you like, I think that's, is that an Australian football? Is that rugby ball? What is that? So she's still smiling. It hadn't taken full effect. So that's what it feels like tomorrow morning. And then I, I, love, I love this. Dear Monday, I want to break up. I'm seeing Tuesday and dreaming about Friday. Sincerely, it's, it's not me. It's you. Okay. <laughs> That's the problem. The problem is you. Monday keeps coming. And we're going to talk about this today. What's next? Mondays. Well, Mondays can be tough. And, um, you know, this past Monday, I started, you know, dove back in Monday morning. And, and I was reading a lot of posts, different articles and such in the world. I kind of live in and read in. And there were articles about the pastor's life on Monday after the Sunday. Now, this is talked about often in ministry circles that a lot of pastors experience a kind of real letdown, kind of a, even a depression almost on, on Monday mornings, or at least a hard time getting you know, back into rhythm, because you can imagine, right? We pour all, a lot into Monday mornings, I mean Sunday mornings. We pour a lot into the sermon and, and prayer and preparation and just praying that God will use this time. And, and so after the fact, there's this kind of let down. Of course, this is not unique to pastors. Um, maybe you're in a life, your life is such that there are certain rhythms in your life that can lead to kind of emotional dips uh, in your life. And it's, it's, it's worth noting and watching for these things because they can happen. It could be a post-holiday uh, experience, um, you know, where you have everybody in or something, some even joyful, wonderful experience. You know, student, you may be on a team or working hard towards a towards a game or a season and when it's over or maybe it's an exam or some event in your life and then after the fact you're kind of down and you don't know why uh, it can happen in work you know business person working hard long towards something I know attorney friends of mine you you're working towards a, a trial maybe you're in trial you know prepping for it for months perhaps and then days in trial and then it's over and uh, and you lose and you know and that's that can be really downer right parents um you know, you pour your lives into kids and all for all for the reason, the purpose of setting them free. And then and then they go. And man, that's tough. I mean, I've seen I remember, you know, back in the day watching even even sending your kid off to preschool or like first grade. You've done that recently. You send them off. It's the moms in the hall. They're the ones crying, you know, not the kids. And, and then you're because you've got this sense that they're growing up and then then they head out of out of school, you know, after graduation. And gosh, and how about, um, gosh, even new moms, you know, walk through nine months of pregnancy and then you have a child. We have a name for that, right? We have a postpartum depression even that can take place. Research shows us that there's kind of this postpartum, post-birth of, of anything in our lives that can bring about an emotional dip, kind of a a shift in our thinking and our thought. And, and I, I just saying all that to say, uh, maybe you're, you're that way. And I want you to be, be okay. Uh, that's normal. But we can overcome that. We can live above this kind of emotional swing of circumstance and things that happen in our lives. And that's what I want to talk about today. So this past Monday, I thought about the disciples. Uh, this The Monday after Sunday. Now, it seems that the the disciples had seen Christ, even the day of the resurrection. After the women came, told them this is happening. And then the others, he said, hey, go to Galilee. I'm going to meet you there. Uh, they, you know, the Monday after Sunday was confusing. 
Um, and so what would happen, Jesus, the resurrected Christ, would reveal himself to them at least 10 times we have recorded over a period of 40 days, and he would tell them what's next. But I'm certain they had a lot of questions on that Monday after Sunday. What's next? And then all of them, maybe you know this, all of them ended up, minus John, who died on the Isle of Patmos in exile, all of them died a martyr's death. Judas already committed suicide uh, you know, the, during Holy Week. But all of them would die a martyr's death. What comes after Sunday? Well, Monday. And what I want you to see today is Sunday is, is special. Monday might be miserable, but your Sunday can change your Monday. And I want to talk about what we've actually modeled. I've told our, our worship team this morning, you guys are just going to model for us what I want to talk about today. We've already experienced what I want to see in Scripture as I guide you today. So what's next? What's next? So this, this month we're going to be talking about that, post-resurrection, as Damon noted earlier. We're just going to talk about life, real life. We're going to talk about, you know, what's next in regard to friends and family and life and work and play. And we're going to talk about what's next in our church on April 29th, by the way. Watch for that. It's a Vision Sunday kind of thing. we got lots that's happening in the days to come. So Sunday can be special. Monday might be miserable, but Sunday can change your Monday. I want you to turn to Colossians 3, and we're going to look at a passage of Scripture that's going to help us unpack really those three simple points. Real simple today, but I want to challenge you today um, to really devote yourselves to the Lord and His church. Now, if you're a guest, um, again, or I should say, you know, not a member, maybe you've been coming for some time. There's some folks joined recently, been coming for like a year. And I said, hey, you know, you don't have to come a year. You know, you don't really you know, give up parking, you know, guest parking, something like that. I don't know. But, but we want you to be sure that you can, if this is your first day, we want to talk to you after the service. I'll guide you to that, what your next steps might be. And really, quick next step, be come next week. Right. And then come the next week. But Colossians three, turn to turn to chapter three. We're going to be looking at verses one through 17. Paul's been doing what he does. All right. Let me put this in context. In his epistles, the, the these these letters that he's that he's written, uh, what he does, he first starts with what we could call gospel indicatives. And then he moves to gospel imperative. Now, gospel indicatives, if you know a little bit of grammar, indicatives are just statements of fact. OK, so what he does is what we've been singing about. What he does in the first part of the book of Colossians, he does this in Philippians, he does it in Ephesians, he does it in Galatians. He says, okay, listen, listen, church, listen, don't forget this is who you are. This is who you are. This is what Christ has done. Okay, so Easter has happened and Christ lived the perfect life on your behalf. He died on the cross. He rose again. You've received this grace. Now you're living a new life. And so this is who you are. You're now a child of God. You were once a living in darkness, the domain of darkness, he says. But he's, he's transferred you into his light. He's brought you over as sons and daughters. He's adopted you into his family. So he goes through this over the first couple of chapters. And he says, this is who you are, gospel indicatives. Okay. Then he shifts to gospel imperatives where he says, okay, now because of this, and one of his favorite words, we're going to see it here today, one of his favorite words is therefore. And we've said it before. You know, if you see it in the Bible, if you see therefore, you've got to ask yourself what it's there for. All right. And so he says it this way in, in, in Colossians 2, before we get to 3. Look at this, verse 6 and 7, because this is really the hinge point of the book. This is the center of the book. He says, therefore, because of this, as you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. All right. So he says, now that Easter, he could say, has come and gone, live in him. He would probably say to us, grow up. And then he's going to talk about how this happens. All right. That's kind of the rest of the book. This is the hinge point. He shifts. But I want you to see this Colossians chapter three, verses one through 17. All right. I'm going to just break it down along the way. First, start with the first four verses. If then... You have been raised with Christ. So this language here really is because you have been, right? So if, and you have been, he's, he's speaking to the church. Or he's talking to people who are believers in Christ, followers of Christ. And if you're here again, if you're just kind of a, a seeker or interested or curious, um, you've come to the right place, all right? Safe place to ask a lot of tough questions. And that's what I want to help unpack today. Because you have been, those of you who have been, 
saved, received Christ. You've been raised with him. I want you to see this. Seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. So he's resurrected, right? He's ascended. He's in heaven at the right hand. This is a place of authority. Set your minds on things that are above. That's where Jesus is. We talked about last week, John 14. You, I'm going to take you to be where I am. This is where he is. Set your mind on him and the things that are above. That is the ways of the kingdom. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things of the earth that are on the earth. All right. For you have died. Okay, watch this. You're raised with him. You've died. And look at this. And you're hidden with Christ in God. What does this mean? You have been hidden in him. You're covered in his righteousness. You're now fully forgiven, totally loved by him in Christ. He'll talk about a lot in his writings, in him, theology kind of position uh, that Paul talks about. In verse four, when Christ, who is your life, now we can, we can stay there for a while. I mean, every one of these verses are loaded. Christ is your life. Christ, who is life for you. All right, when he appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. We talked about this last week. All of, all of life, all of history is heading towards a resurrected people, worshiping a, on, a, on a resurrected earth, worshiping a resurrected Savior. He is making all things new. A Christ who is your life. Now, here's what I want you to see. And I'm going to kind of use this passage in a way that helps us get our minds around what we're seeking to do here on Sunday mornings. And again, if you're a guest, or if you're not yet a member, my great challenge for you is to get on board, really to stop dating the church, um, make a commitment. And uh, you may not have come today thinking this way, but I want to challenge you towards that. Because the first thing I want you to see is this Sunday can be special. Right now, we know Easter Sunday is special. And if you desire to live this new life, Paul is saying, then now here's here's some things that I want you to know. But watch this. Sunday can be special first because of who I am. All right. If you take notes, write this down because of who I am. Sunday special because of what we've already done today. It reminds us of who we are. Right. If you've received Christ, you're no longer a slave to fear. We're a son and daughter of the king. And if you're if you're new to our church, you just need to know this. This is why we do this. All of the Christian life is a life of remembrance and response. All of life is a life of remembrance because we celebrate. We live because of something that's happened. It's already happened. It's a historic moment. And then if we've received Christ by faith, then it is an historic moment in our lives as well. And there's been a dramatic shift. Resurrection Sunday is special. Sunday is amazing because Sunday has changed everything. And our Sundays can change everything in our lives. Every time we come into worship, here's what I have. A, I have a practice in my own personal life. I encourage you to do the same. Before I step into, and I do it on, uh, in the mornings as well, before I come into God's Word, when I come into worship, I say a simple prayer. Lord, remind me again of how much you love me. Remind me again of how much you love me. And that happened this morning. I'm over here. I mean, I'm almost in tears singing over here. And then I'm wailing, and I'm like, oh, i got to preach. I better ease up on my voice. i got to take it easy. Because I'm just like, yes, yes. Not because, dang, that awesome, dang, this music is incredible. No, no. And those lights, that is lit back there, by the way. Um, Tanner Holman and the crew, man, way to go. But, but not because of that. It's, it's because I'm like, yes, yes, this is who I am. Yes, this is how much he loves me. And that's why we gather. That's why we do this. It's, I know it's why many of you, most of you are here. You're like, you can't, I can't wait to be reminded again of how much he loves me. And even if that's kind of in the subconscious level for you, I want, I want you to hear, and, and especially again, our guests, this is why we come together. Because we are a gospel-centered people, and the gospel is central to everything that we do. I mean, look at what he said already in verses 1 through 4. We've sung about it. Look, you've been raised with him. You have died with him, verse 3. You've, you're hidden with him. You will be raised with him, verse 4. I mean, it's just like, man, let's remember who we are. Sunday can be special because of who I am, because I am now a child of God. And I get to do this with family. That's why sun, Sunday is special. But don't you also see because of who I get to be with, right? I mean, we don't get, just get to talk to God. We get to be with others, 
in the body. And this is where now I want to challenge you. Because it's one thing to come into the big room, you know, or come into the sanctuary or come to worship. And it's powerful, like I've, like I've noted already, or to even hear the word of God now preached and applied. It's quite another thing to find yourself in a connect group that Dave, Damon mentioned earlier. Because you see, the church, the congregational life of our church takes place in the connect group. It's not because you get to come here and hide out and then go out and be off again. Uh, we're family. And so we do life together through our connect groups. When, when you know, in your week, uh, I, I want to ask you, when, when are you surrounded by people who are also pursuing Christ? I don't know if your workplace is like that. I mean, like your class is like that. Maybe. But, but I'm guessing that there's no other time in the week when you come together with other believers, maybe in your family, but you come together and you say, man, let's seek Christ together. How do we do this? Let's encourage each other. I mean, what are you going through? I mean, I'm, hey, you know what? I'm walking through a real hard season right now, and I need to talk to somebody about this. Friends, listen, we, we, have, we, we, we make it very clear and very simple for you. We have connect groups on Sunday mornings. And in fact, you, your kids are taken care of while you do those things. And, and I want to challenge you, if you're not in a connect group, you're not, you're, you're not devoting yourself to, to Christ and his church and his great dream for you to grow up in him. And to be reminded of who you are. We have incredible classes and teachers who've met just prior to this hour. In fact, I'm curious, how many of you, you don't have to be in a group necessarily as you, well, you're in a group, maybe you're serving. You know, you're like, you know what, I have my Bible study at another time during the week, or I'd rather serve children or youth or hold babies or teach or something else. How many of you, you know, are in a connect group, either in a group or serving? How many of you are in a group? Raise your hand. If you're in a group. Yeah, you're in a connect group. Listen, I know that the large percentage of people who come to worship do that. And that's rare in a lot of churches. Um, but friends, not here because it's primary, it's central to what we're trying to do. And if you did not, could not raise your hand, I've got your next step. You need to do that. And we're going to be ready to talk with you after the service. That's why the Lord brought you here today, because of who you get to be with. And this is the power of the church. This week, I was able, now you might imagine, I mean, I'm with the whole church family across the board, which is incredible from my position. It's possible in a church like ours to end up in a group and everybody's kind of like us, you know, like everybody's my age and everybody's like, but, but the more you get involved in the church, the more you start to get to know others who are not like you who think differently than you. They look different than you. They, 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 they grew up differently than you. They, they're older or younger than you. This week, I got to hang out with Fred Pendleton for a little bit. Anybody know Fred Pendleton? Fred's been around since Moses. I mean, he's, Fred, I can say that. Fred might be in here. Fred, he might be Moses. And uh, so we're talking about the history of our church. And, and I mean, he's, it's just incredible. Fred's telling me he remembers when Northwest Highway right here is a brother-in-law who used to who used to hunt uh, bobcats, shoot bobcats on the other side of Northwest Highway here. Because it's like the edge. I mean, what an audacious vision of people had before we ever showed up. Uh, I, mean, I say that some most of us. I mean, to this church and this in the sanctuary, I mean, it's out here like on the prairie. Uh, somebody noted, I think it was, I think it was Fred, he said, Dr. Howard said, this is either gonna be the biggest country church on the planet, or it's going to be a thriving city church someday. And it's that. Not because of anything we did, right? But, and, and I'm saying that because I get to hang out with people like Fred Pendleton. I, I, I was in meetings this week and got to be with Greg Boyd. Some of you know Greg. I mean, he's just this, this, this godly, wise, you know, um, just calm, encouraging spirit in my life. And and gosh, I get to be with students. I can't wait. I'm going to youth camp, you know. And VBS is coming. Uh, I was with a group of young adults two weeks ago. Of just, I mean, challenging me. They're so hyped about Jesus. Uh, I get to meet people and get to know and do life with people like John and Zona Parker, who are walking through a, a challenging season right now. And I get to watch them as they love Jesus, as they just cling to him. As they walk through a challenging season, I'm encouraged by that. And here's my point. You can be, too. That's the church. But not if you're not involved. It's not going to happen. It's the power of the connect group. We call them connect groups because we connect with one another. We connect with God's word and we connect with the mission of the church. All right. And I want to challenge you, every person. So it, it meant Sunday is special. 
because of who I am. I'm reminded of who I am because of who I get to be with. And then thirdly, because of who I get to worship. That's why we come, right? We get to worship Jesus and we get to do this together. It's a foretaste of heaven. It's where Paul is pointing us. He says, man, we're Christ who is life. This is where all this is going, and we get to taste it a little bit. But I want you to see this. Now, here's where there's a turn in all of this. Uh, second thing I want you to see here is uh, Monday might be miserable, right? So Sunday is awesome. Sunday can be special. Monday might be miserable. Look at what he, he says here. And again, I'm just applying this to kind of Sunday, Monday, and the purpose of our gathering. Look, look at verse 5. Put to death, therefore. Uh-oh, there's a shift. He was talking about eternal life and all that good stuff. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity. You know, he's talking about, man, lust and passion of the flesh, evil desires, covetousness, wanting something somebody else has, comparing ourselves, which is idolatry, worshiping those things that might be good, but we make them best things, good things, God things. In verse 6, on account of these, the wrath of God, uh uh-oh, is coming. This is the full wrath of God that comes upon those who are not in him and those things, the disobedience against him. Wrath is his holy reaction to sin is what that is. In these you too once walked. He says, hey, you were like this when you were living in them. But now, verse 8, everybody say, but now. But now, okay, but now you must put them all away. Anger and wrath and malice, slander and obscene talk. From your mouth, and he's got a list. Don't lie to each other. Don't lie to one another. Seeing that you have put off the old self. You took it off with its practices. And you put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. The one who's created you, right? He, he's, he's, he's making you new. And you're learning these things as you're involved in the body, in the church. And I'd argue, yes, here on a Sunday in your connect group, involved with other people, you're being renewed. Verse 11, here, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian. Scythian, by the way, was like the lowest, most barbaric of all, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. He's saying we might be different. We come from all walks of life, but Christ is at the center and he's the one who guides us and, and, and we press on even into Monday, even in Monday. But look at this. Monday might be miserable. Here's why. Monday might be one long fight. Let's go ahead and admit it, right? It's a battle, he says. I mean, he's saying put to death these things. He's not playing games. He says you need to put these things aside. We live in this tension of being saved or have been saved and being saved. He talks about in verses 1 through 4, having power over sin. But we still have this presence of sin. We're challenged by that. There's coming a day when we won't have to deal with that. That's heaven. In the presence of Christ, no sin, no death. We talked about last week. But we're in the battle. Monday might be one long fight. But look at this. Monday might be your stage. Monday is your stage. This is exactly why we go to Monday. We gather to scatter wherever God places us. And that's where you are to put on display this work of putting off and putting on. It'd be one thing to do this off in a monastery somewhere, right? Like I'm going to rid myself of all sin. I'm going to live on an island with a bunch of other dudes for months on end. Well, that'd be one thing. It's quite another thing for me to live my life in front of people where where God is doing a new thing in me, where once I was angry and now not so much. I I was once selfish and focused. I had an uh, unbridled ambition to, to, to do this or that. And I was taking people down to get there. Now I have a redeemed ambition and people are wondering, what's driving you? What is that? You see, I get to live out this life on Monday in my place where God's put me on stage. Listen, students, again, if you tomorrow morning, you're going to find yourself in a classroom. God has put you in that class in order to show your classmates what Jesus would look like if he was sitting in your seat. Business person, God's placed you in your business, not simply to make money. He's placed you there so that others would see what Jesus might look like if he were in your role. Moms, 
Same way. I make it track all the way. To, how about this? You live in the place where you live, your apartment. Because God wants you to show other people what Jesus would look like if he's living in your apartment. You're on, that's your stage. Monday is your stage. It might be a long fight, but it is your place, right? Monday might be an interruption. Have you figured that out yet? I mean, right? Monday will probably go uh, in a way you did not plan. Count on it, right? That might help you. Be prepared. I mean, I'm the ultimate optimist, but, you know, be ready. Because here's the thing. Monday might be one big interruption, This is kind of Jesus' life. This is a life of one who's open to the needs of others. You may be going hard at it tomorrow at the office or at home or at work, and then all of a sudden, and it's probably the great opportunity of the day that God's given you. If you're listening, watching, Jesus was often in a hurry. Uh, I mean, he was often busy, but he was never in a hurry. Think about that. And in the same way, just because you're busy, I mean, this is kind of my life. I'm preaching to myself here. Uh, Monday might be an, one big interruption. But here's what I want you to see. Sunday can be special. If you're devoted to it, if you're all in on Sunday. Now, for some, it's a very casual thing. You know, I mean, frankly, can I say it? Some of you, I may not see for another month. Well, you, Jeff, I got stuff going on, man. You know, we, I mean, come on. And this weather's getting nice. I'm working all week long. Now I got to get up on Sunday, go to church. You're being reminded why you come here. There's nothing like this gathering all week long. I'd argue this is the most important gathering that you have all week long. Because Sunday can be special. Monday might be miserable. But your Sunday can change your Monday. Look at this, verse 12. And we'll close with this thought here. Put on then. All right, so put off all that stuff. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. You see, he keeps coming back. Remember, you're God's chosen one. You're holy. You've been made righteous because of Christ, not your own righteousness, but because of what he's done. Put on, put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. Now, again, he's talking to us. He's talking to the church. But he's also saying this is how we're to live, live in your home, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. That's another sermon. Biggest word in this whole passage might be that little word as the Lord has forgiven you. You forgive each other. So you also must forgive. And above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ Rule in your heart. How many need peace in your life? Man, I'm filled with, I mean, a Monday comes, we're filled with worry. Even, even while I've been talking a little bit, you've already been thinking about Monday. Oh, yeah, Monday. Jeff, you're right, Monday. Oh, man, Monday. That tomorrow, yes, I got that tomorrow. I'm making you anxious, you're getting all worried. You need peace. He says, let the peace of Christ, let the peace of Christ rule in your life in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. He's saying with the body. And then he says this. He says, uh, and be thankful. Be thankful. That that seems to be out of place, but it's not at all. He He keeps saying this. And be grateful and with hearts of gratitude. And be thankful because all of the Christian life is a life of gratitude. Right? It's a life of remembrance. It's a life of response. It's a life of gratitude. Our lives should be one big hallelujah. Praise be to God. Everything that we do, he says, and be be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. He doesn't say the word of God. This is another way of saying, let the gospel, what Christ has done, who he is, let, let Christ and his word dwell in your heart richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. So we do that. Again, that's what our church is all about. It's what connect groups are all about. Teaching, admonishing one another, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. These spiritual songs, you might think, oh yeah, praise songs. Nobody's talking about. No, you know, no, he's talking about songs. Yeah, maybe songs that are generated by the spirit. You're singing because your heart is connecting with God in worship, spiritual songs and thankfulness in your heart. There it is again. We sing with gratitude and thankfulness. And then verse 17, 
which really was the driver behind this whole idea in this series and in this message. And whatever you do, in word or deed, anything you say or do, do everything in the name that is according to the character of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. I love that. Giving, there it is again, giving thanks to him for all that he's done for us. Now, if I haven't talked about the importance of our connect groups enough, I want you uh, to watch this little short uh, kind of video here that talks about the importance, the power of a connect group. Check this out. We've been with a group for, since we were newly married, and uh, we've been through having children together and going through all the struggles that come along with it. That's the first place I run when I've got a, a need in my life is to turn to my friends and my group. And you know there's others out there. And, and what we tell them is, look, you know, we're not gonna, you're not gonna be spoon fed. You're gonna have to get involved. You're gonna have to, it's gonna be what you put into it. And it's so much more comfortable to get to be authentic with people. You don't have to just do the surface stuff. You get to be you. And um, whether God's working good stuff in your life or hard stuff in your life, you, they're there. And that doesn't happen when you're just someone Hey, so I just want to encourage you as we kind of land the plane here. Um, you've heard, you've heard that. And, and after the service, we want to talk with you. Um, maybe the most courageous thing you can do. Some of you are like, I don't know about this connect group stuff. Listen, just check it out. Just try it. You're going to be welcomed in. There's probably uh, several groups where you could land, where you could fit. We have a next group. Uh, I mean, a next step area. You can just follow the signs. I'll be back there. Others will be there to greet you and to, and to answer any questions you may have. Some of you, sure enough, today you need to join the Fellowship of the Church. We, 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 we want to commit ourselves to the Lord. Uh, you know, the Lord said that if you, if you want to really find your life, then you lose it. You, you give your life away to Him first, right? You give your life to all that He's done for you, and you live your life for others. And someone noted, uh, you know, when you talk about involvement up against commitment, some of you are involved here to some degree. Other of you are really committed to the body and to this church, and you're radically committed to it. Somebody said the difference is like ham and eggs, right? You've heard this? But the chicken was involved. The pig was committed. I mean, he was in. He's all in. And in the same way, you know, the Lord calls us to die to ourselves, literally, and to give our lives uh, to others, because that's what he did. He gave his life on the cross, and he's called us now to go. And I want to encourage you to do this. Friends, listen, as a church family, and it really just focusing in on Sunday and what, we're, what we do here, um, invite people to come to your connect group. Invite your friends to come. Invite people to go to lunch with you. Go to lunch after church more times with others than alone. And if you're single, just, just have a pattern. Don't, don't eat alone. Eat with others. Don't be a hermit. Live your life with others. And some of you, even if you're married and have kids, you need to be involved in the lives of others. You can get to know people who aren't like you, people who hold a different political you know, perspective than you, someone who doesn't look like you. That's what the Lord's called us to do is to bridge the gap and to love people for free. And you'll have opportunity to do that this week. But let's, let's reach out. Let's reach out to those who are not yet here. Every one of our connect groups, every one of your groups should be growing because you're inviting people to come be a part. And praise God, those of you who are serving, our preschoolers and our children, you're investing, you're giving your life to them, teaching. Way to go. I know that many of us do that, or maybe on a pattern, maybe do it during this hour often, but way to go. And I just want to encourage you, continue to be involved in the Lord's church. Now, I'm going to close in prayer. I'm going to kind of close the morning out with just a time for you to pray before the Lord. And then I'm going to challenge and encourage you as to what kind of decision the Lord's calling you to make. All right, so let's all bow our heads and, and close our eyes. We're just going to close our service in prayer. Um, and then I'm going to give some final uh, steps for us. But I want to ask you, um, 
Yeah, what does your commitment need to be? Just before the Lord right now. Just talk to Him. What do you need to do? And friend, I want to speak to some of you who are here and you've never made a commitment to follow Christ. I'm so glad you've come today. Way to go. I want to encourage you, if you never have, it's, it's a simple really interaction before the Lord just to say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I believe. I want to believe more. I believe you are the answer. Friend, Christ died on the cross for you. He gave his life. He lived the perfect life for you so you wouldn't have to. And now you can give him your life and say yes in response. Give him your life today. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Make me the person you've created me to be. I give you my life. And friend, for so, for so many of you here, maybe you just pray that prayer. Others, you've been here. You know you are a child of God. You've made that commitment, but you're not committed to the church. You, you've not joined the fellowship. Today's your day. Or maybe you, you're a member, but you're not really involved. You come to a large group thing or maybe an event upcoming. I want to challenge you. What is your next step? We want to help you. Get in a connect group. Let today be the day you decide. Come back next week and come early. Come at 9 and find your way. And we'll guide you. Lord, I pray that you would bless every person here. Uh, that we would be the people you've called us to be. Thank you again for this day. Thank you for this great church. A place where we can come and remember who we are. Because Sundays are awesome as we bring our lives to you. And we know that Monday might be miserable. It may be real challenging. But that's where you're going to put us on stage. And we're going to get to shine the light that is within us. Because we've been reminded of who we are. And I pray that we'll live that out this week. And I pray, God, that in every one of our lives that we'll be so devoted to Sundays that we won't miss one. And Sunday will change our Mondays. Sunday will change our real lives that we live Monday through Friday and Saturday. So, Lord, thank you for this great dream of yours, this church. Thank you that you have given us each other. We praise you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for taking time to watch this sermon. If you would like more information about our church or following Jesus, please go to our website, pcbc.org, or contact our church offices. We hope to see you next week at church.